Hey guys and welcome back to the Character Tutoring YouTube channel. My name is CL and today I'm going to be covering the Problem Solving and Data Analysis Unit on the SAT Math section. Last week we covered the Heart of Algebra Unit and in the coming weeks we have videos on Passport to Advanced Math and some additional topics that cover a variety of topics from your high school math career. The Problem Solving and Data Analysis Unit includes four big ideas, ratios and percentages, unit conversions, interpreting graphs and tables, and lastly, probability slash statistical methods. Be sure to sign up for care tutoring in the link in the description below. And on the next page, I'll have a couple of questions that will test your knowledge of the problem solving and data analysis unit. Feel free to pause the video and come back once you have an answer. Let's begin. For a brand new show on Broadway, 300 adults and children attended a show. The ratio of adults to children was 2 to 1. How many children attended the show? So in this case, what we're trying to find is the number of children, and we could use x to represent that. And we also know that the number of adults that attended the show was two times greater than the number of children. So that can be represented with 2x. And then there's just a variable form. So then we set the total, which is 3x equal to the number of people that attended the show. And we get that x is equal to 100. So we have 100 children that attended the show. Now, let's say that the ratio of adults to children was 4 to 2. How many children attended the show? So in this case, what we do is try to find a way to simplify that ratio. In the first one, we couldn't do it. However, this one is just going to simplify to 2 to 1. So in this case, it's actually going to be the exact same answer. How about with a ratio of 1 to 4? How many children attended the show? I forgot to put that there. So in this case, what we do is we represent the number of adults this time um, because it's the smaller one. I'm going to re represent the number of adults with x. And we know that the number of children is four times as much as the number of adults. So we can represent that with 4x. Then we add those two together like the first time, for a, like question A. And then we set it equal to the number of people that attended the show. And then we find the number of adults that attended the show. And then lastly, we multiply that by 4. For the following set of questions, convert the given units into the desired units. If a volume of Q was 64 cubic feet, what is the volume in cubic inches? So recall that a cubic feet is 1 foot times 1 foot times 1 foot. And recall that. 1 foot is 12 inches. Now, what we could do is substitute 1 foot is equal to 12 inches into the equation for the cubic feet. So then we get 1 cubic foot is equal to 12 inches times 12 inches times 12 inches. And you use your calculator for that. And you get 1,728 cubic inches. Lastly, we multiply by 64 since we have 64 cubic feet, and we get 110,592 cubic inches. In a sketch of a new school building, 2 centimeters represents 50 meters in real life. Its dimensions of the sketch are 8 centimeters by 10 centimeters. What is the actual area of the school building? So this time, we're talking about the square footage or the square meters. So what we have to do is set up a proportion. Now let's solve for the 8 centimeters first. So since 2 centimeters represents 50 meters in real life, you can put 2 centimeters over 50 meters is equal to 8 centimeters over x meters. That's what we're trying to find. Just like that, we made a proportion and we cross multiply. So we see that 2x is equal to 400 meters. And x is finally equal to 200 meters. So that's just one side of the school building. Let's find the other side. We do the same thing. 2 centimeters over 50 meters is equal to 10 centimeters over y meter. I'm just going to use a different variable just so I don't get confused. And then we cross multiply again. 2x is equal to 500m. And finally, y is equal to 250m. Oh, I made a mistake. 2y is equal to 500 meters. OK, 
Convert 203 miles into kilometer. Use one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So the first thing I would do is figure out what I'm trying to convert into. I'm trying to convert into kilometers. So let's rewrite this as a fraction. Since we're trying to convert into kilometers, we can say that for every mile, there's going to be 1.6 or 1.6 kilometers per mile. So let me just write this as a fraction. So this is going to be our conversion factor. So 1.6 kilometers per mile. And then we just multiply by 203 since we have 203 miles. And we get 324.8 kilometers. To ensure the advertised durability of electronic devices met, an independent firm is hired to drop test the advertised rugged phones from a height of 10 feet. The firm receives 200 phones randomly selected from the weekly production line and discovers that the mean number of drops the phones can endure is 8 drops, with a margin of error of 2 drops. Which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion based on this data? All the rugged phones produced by the company in a week can survive 6 to 8 drops. This is going to be wrong because they didn't survey all the phones. They only received 200 out of the weekly batch. B is also going to be wrong because we didn't test all the phones. Next, we have pretty much the same thing, 6 to 10 drops. And that's going to be calculated using the margin of error. So how they got this number was you subtract 2 from the mean number and you add 2. So basically, you're giving a distance of 2 above and below the mean, which is what the margin of error is. So let's read the choices. It is plausible that the mean number of drops the rugged phones produced by the company that week can survive is between 6 to 10 drops. It is plausible that the mean number of drops all rugged phones produced by the company can survive between 6 to 10 drops. I felt like, yeah, uh, this is going to be a slight grammar mistake. Uh, let me fix this real quick. Is between 6 to 10 drops. So in this case, what I'm going to say is that D is incorrect because we did not test all the phones like we did before. For the current school year, an elementary school decides to offer books to bring home to all students and their parents. The students with families that did end up taking the books to read at home were able to read and write faster than the students who didn't take a book home. Based on the results, which of the following conclusions can be made? A. Taking books home to read will cause an improvement for any student in elementary school. This is going to be incorrect because we didn't survey all the students. Taking books home to read will cause an improvement for elementary school students who choose to read those books. Again, we didn't randomly select students. We didn't have an experiment set up where students took home books and students did not take home books. What I'm saying is we didn't have a control group to compare. So in this case, B and C are going to be wrong actually, because we can't make conclusions off of this. There was no experiment made and there was no random selection. In the end, no conclusion can be made because there was no random selection and it wasn't an experiment. A gardening store buys its seeds wholesale. The store sells the wholesale seeds for 75% more than the wholesale price. If the sale price of a pack of seeds is $5, what is the wholesale price? So in this case, the store sells the wholesale seeds for 75% more than the wholesale price. So we could think of this as 1.75 times the original price or the wholesale price. So if the sale price of the pack of seeds in the store is $5, what we could do is just divide by 1.75. And we get $2.86. Next, we have a table which shows the time and the number of animals in a wildlife reserve. At time zero, we have 100 animals. At time one, we have 250 animals. Time two, we have 400, and time three, we have 550. Which of the following functions best models the scenario? In this case, we're going to be comparing linear and exponential functions. So linear functions are going to increase slash decrease by a constant rate, whereas exponential functions are going to increase slash decrease 
by a non-constant rate. So if you look back, uh, we start off with 100, then we increase by 150, and then we also increase by 150 here. Uh, lastly, for times 2 to 3, we also increase by 150. So in this case, what we have is an increasing linear function since the number of animals is going up, and it's going up by a constant amount. Which of the following functions best models the data in the table above? Let P of T represent the number of animals in the wildlife reserve after T year. So in this case, A is going to be incorrect because that is an exponential function. B is also going to be incorrect because we start off with 100. So if we put T is equal to zero, we, get, we should get 100. A is going to be incorrect because that's an exponential function. B is also going to be incorrect because at time zero, we have 100 animals in the reserve. C is also going to be incorrect because if time was zero, then we don't start off with 200 animals. We start off with 100 animals. So lastly, we're left with D. So this is a probability question. And what we're supposed to do is calculate the probability that a randomly selected student is a right-handed boy. So we have a total of 45 students as represented by this number. Um, and we also have 15 right-handed boys. So in this case, what we're going to do is put 15 over 45 because the number of right-handed boys is 15 over the total number of students that we're selecting from, which is 45. So 15 over 45, and that's one third. Okay, so this question is going to be asking about the mean slash median of the histogram below, and there are a total of 80 data values. So the first thing we're going for is the answer choice, because that will help us figure out. So as here, all the medians are going to be. So then what we need to do is just find a median and be good. So the first thing we're going to do is recognize that we have data value. And for and to calculate the median for 80 data values, what we need to do is take the average of the 40th and 41st data value. So in this case, what we have 5, that should be 11. Bad. 5, 11, 16, 23, that's 39, 39, and 24. So it's going to fall in between these two right here. So we have 13 inclusive and 13 non -inclusive. So in this case, that we can say that the median is going to round or and that's going to be our final answer. None of these medians are actually close to the actual thing. So, A. Next, we're going to talk about standard deviation. If we take a look at the right, which one of these colored graphs has the greatest standard deviation? So these all have the same mean, and standard deviation refers to how many data points are outside or away from the mean. So in this case, the greatest standard deviation would be the red graph because it's more spread out away from the mean. And in terms of the least standard deviation, the blue is going to be the one with the least standard deviation because you can see a steeper hill towards the mean, which is around 75. Next, we have a position versus time graph. And what we're going to do is figure out, and what we're going to do is figure out different things at different times during which of the following time intervals you the vehicle the fast. So in this case, we look for it slope. So here we see zero to one, that's five. One to two, that's another five, five to 10. And then we stop two to four. And then four to five, we go from 10 and we go back to one. So that's going to be a nine here uh, in terms of the slope. And that's just going to be a one, one to zero. So in this case, the speed would be fastest at this point, 4 to 5. Slope, the magnitude of the slope is greater. Then we have to look for velocity. So in case we don't have velocity, it includes direct. So that's why I chose this uh, 4 to 5 as the greatest speed, because the speed doesn't consider direct, but velocity does. So in order to find the greatest velocity, it needs to be headed in. It needs to be heading in a positive direction, so it has to be positive and has to have the greatest magnitude. So here, 
negative 9 over here, negative 1 over here, 0, and 5 over here, between 0, so 0 to 2 hours when the velocity is greater. And the vehicle was stopped between 2 to 4 because the distance did not change. And finally, what's the total distance vehicle traveled? So in order to get to the stop point right here, 10 miles, and then we went all the way back to another 10 miles. So 20 miles in total. So that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, be sure to sign up for Kira Tutoring below, and have a nice day.